Hey guys, welcome to Bino Sester Malqua's channel. And today I'd like to share with you an educational game that I personally adore. It's called Head Full of Numbers. And I'm actually going to show you how we use it because <laughs> if you go through our channel, we don't follow any rules. So let's start off by looking at what's inside of it. So the first thing, it's, oh, by the way, it's a nice square box just in case, you know. You're curious, and it fits nicely with our square boxes. Um, so you're going to get these instructions. Um, something to note, you're also going to get a notepad. Now, if you're a classroom teacher, not going to last long. But again, look at this. Make up your own. <laughs> not so hard. Um, one thing I do want to point out, and I've noticed it, and unfortunately everyone else has noticed it, is that the plastic is a little stinky, but what are you going to do about that? Um, it also comes with it's stuck. Ah. All right, not a favor of the box design, so probably gonna get rid of that. But anyway, um, a little dice holder. It's cute. You know, something that give or take if you want to use it. A timer. I personally love timers. Keeps track of time, not overwhelming, and the kids know when you're starting or stopping. So, total fan. The most important part is this really cute guy, and this is the head, and inside his head are the dice or numbers, head full of numbers. Love the play on words. Um, and that's it. So what you will need from your home is a pen or pencil. So I'm going to show you how we play because, um, yeah, that's what we do, learning through play. So the first thing we do is, I'm personally not a fan of this, so we don't actually use it. But just like the game says, roll the guy's head and pour out the numbers. And I got number three, number one, another number one, number seven, number two, and number seven. So what we play is, is that, well, let me tell you how the rules go and then I'll tell you how we play. The rules go, you write all those numbers down on the top, you set your timer, and then you kind of fill out the numbers using equations. So for example, I would write um, two plus one is three, because the numbers are here. I could also do an inequality. Two is greater than three. I can do, here um, 2 minus 1 is 3 so right now we could do addition subtraction multiplication division as long as it's math related you write it down the kids are good to go and then once the timer runs out you go along with everyone and then whoever has unique examples is the winner and so that's kind of how you're supposed to play now, here's how we play. We start off like everybody else. Put the numbers in the head and roll the dice. Yep, one got stuck in his nose. We rolled a five. I'll just go quickly. Eight, one, one, eight, six. So these are the numbers. Now, we use each column as a start and a stop. So the children know, because for something like this, not all children like math, and I want math to be fun. And then I say, ready, set, go. Now, when I work with kids, I usually tell them what the expectation is. So for example, if we're learning addition and inequalities, you may use the numbers and come up with your own sum. So I'm adding more math terms. So I may do, let's see, five plus, oops, one, is equal to six, even what well, happens to be six is here, but I might do uh, eight plus one, because it's not an eight plus one, is equal to nine. I may do one plus one is two. So again, I set the tone based on the education we're learning. If we're learning multiplication, same way. Um, again, for more advanced players, by all means follow the rules, but if I want my, you know, I can give my students a worksheet and say, hey, do some, you know, addition problems. That's not fun. 
I mean, those are important, but what if I tell the kids, here are some numbers, make your own addition problems, and come up with the totals? And better yet, here's the first one, here's the last one, compare them with your peers, and then start again. And let's take it a step further. So let's say I got three right. So I put three correct in the first box. I got three, not correct, unique ones. Three unique ones. And then the next one I would do plus two unique ones plus one unique one look at this not only did i practice addition now i'm practicing multiple numbers and we put the total at the end so it'll be three plus two is five plus one is six and now we added a new step of math so how do we use it for, what's my overall opinion and how do we use it? My overall opinion, again, here's the box just so you can see it. Head full of numbers is definitely a keeper. My favorite part about it is not only do the kids learn from it, but like you see, I just, I think to myself, what do the kids need to learn and how can I make it not come from me? How can I make it come from them? And this game, you mean you just have this cute little grandpa head over here. You have a whole bunch of dice. And just take it one step further. If you have 10-sided dice, substitute it so you get bigger numbers. And then I say, you know, what did we learn in class today? W what are we up to? Are we up to addition, subtraction, multiplication, division? I don't know. Whatever you're up to, throw the dice in the head and give your kids a challenge. And once they've learned, because this game is really for basic review, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and inequalities, which is greater than, less than, and equals to, then take it to the final step and play by the rules. Spill out the dice and have them use the actual dice as they're supposed to. And that's really hard because they really have to think. They not only have to know their math facts, but they have to know the totals that go with it. And that's a pretty challenging skill. And the best part that I personally like is depending on the group I'm working with, I can give them a start and stop based on each column, or I can give them a start and stop based on the timer. So I have all of this flexibility, and who doesn't want to have fun? So yeah, in my opinion, Head Full of Numbers is definitely a game worth keeping. If you have Head Full of Numbers or you think you're going to purchase it, then please do me one of two favors. The first favor is don't forget to like the video because if you like it, I'll know that either A, you have it, or B, you approve of using this in your classroom. And number two, if you don't have it, I'm going to leave an affiliate link below so you can purchase it and add it to your classroom, homeschool, whatever the case is because this is definitely good for one-on-one, -on -one, small group play, you know, tutoring, homeschooling. This is one of those games that once you have it, it's good for everything. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe because we have tons more educational opportunities coming up. And one last sneak peek of Head Full of Numbers. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful day.